Okay, I'm back. I've now finished up the bell skirt for our coin bell. And I've got it so it will now match the dome. I've also sanded the top section of the cut side here of the skirt. So it will sit, you know, the dome now can sit flat on it. Just give you an idea here. When I put the pieces together and I made sure that it's nice proportioned, nice and uniformed. And that's what our, the one we've been working on right there. I'm going to tell you that well, when I finished up, you know, we started with the 1.0 side of the 17 degree die. I did end up having to turn it over to complete getting the, the uh, hole opened like I needed it to. I went ahead and I did push through the 0.90 side, just a few pushes on that. So with this, you know, the 17 degree die is all I used to form the skirt. Okay. But I did want to let you know that I did turn it over and use the 0.90 side. And there's other things here. Uh, there's one other thing I did, and uh, we talked about it in the other video, but let's say if you didn't, you know, the one quarter uh, punch that I used gives you a taller skirt, and I like the shape of these bells. And that's one I've already finished. But I said, let me, let me just show you what I did to flare it. I flared this one just a little bit more, not as tall. So all you have to do, I just turned it over. Using my arbor press, I took a one inch stainless steel ball bearing. That's all you have to do. Put it on there, take your arbor press, just slightly, slightly. You can get down eye level with it and just press and you'll see it flare. You'll see it flare open there. And that's all you need is a one inch stainless steel ball bearing. Don't use a three quarter inch. You may say, well, it fits on top, but sometimes a three quarter inch ball bearing will, um, get inside the dome there and make it wonky and and you say well i can use a you know a half inch is even smaller that's even worse you, you can put that in there and you say well, it's going to flare it out no it actually makes a bow here so if you're wanting to flare it out some if you don't like that you know it being as tall just go ahead simply like i said put one inch stainless steel ball bearing on top now, this is for quarters and flare it open there okay the next thing we're going to do is bond these two pieces together and we're getting ready to do that right now. So I just want to show you this again. There's our just about finished coin bell. Okay, we're back. We're getting ready now to bond our two pieces together, our dome to our skirt and if you watched uh, my two coin pendant video, part two, you see that I like to use JB Weld when I bond my two parts together. Now you can solder them together. No, no harm in that, no problem with that at all. Just, uh, if you're not set up for soldering or if you're not, uh, don't know how to solder, then you know this is just an alternative here. And I like to use this alternative because of the clean lines that it has. Now JB Weld takes four hours to set and then it takes you know, it says 18 to 24 hours to cure completely. But uh, I like JB Well because not only is it a strong bond, it gives you clean lines. There's not a lot of spillage anywhere. Uh, also, I can adjust this in a couple hours if I wanted to. If, it's just, if I feel like there's something wrong after looking at it, I can just adjust it. So it gives me time to adjust any kind of uh, problems I might find. But I've already put it around the rim, take a toothpick, the JB Weld mixed already, and just put around the rim of the skirt. You don't have to put it on the bottom of the of the dome. Now, I will say this, I did make sure that the, these edges here were nice and flat on both sides, and it's also cleaned. No oils on there. I'm gonna go ahead now and just put this together and just give you an idea here. Let me find my date. There it is. And all you do is just simply lay it on top and press down. Now you see this is squeezed out. You now take a Q-tip and just simply wipe off the excess. The excess. See, I can see now that I need to adjust it a little bit. Just turn it. 
press down and it's already when I press down it's not going to just slip off on me I keep some q-tips here available let's see here get around here just wipe it off and pretty much that's all you need to do now I'll sit here and play with it a little bit and just kind of move it around back and forth to just adjust it and that's really all you need to do you now lay it aside wait you know a couple hours might come in uh, I think this time I'm gonna go ahead in a couple of hours, I'm going to come back when I know it's set pretty good. But, it, you know, like I said, four hours, it's really set. And take this plastic clamp here and just clamp it together and let it sit, uh, you know, overnight. And then we're ready then to add a clapper and, uh, you know, have a wire that we put onto our topper here that's attached to a, uh, the clapper. And that's going to be our next little segment. And at the very end, we'll probably... Uh, do some antiquing with this one with uh, Black Max. But there you go. That's how we bond our two pieces together using the JB Weld. Okay, we're back. I want to show you the coin bell we made. We let it cure overnight. And there's the where we'll put the two parts together. Nice and strong bond. Not going to come apart on you, but now it's time to add the topper and the clapper. And I've got all this here together, and as you see, let me go ahead and back off a little bit here. You have the topper, we have the coin bell, we have a screw that's going to attach the topper, we have a wire here, and it's actually this is two pieces of 20 gauge wire that I put together to to uh, actually you know attach to the screw. And then to the bottom of that's going to be a, a, a jump ring. And then we have our clapper. Now this is a 3 8 clapper, uh, 3 8 punch. And I recommend that for quarters. Uh, it's a nice size for quarters. It looks very symmetrical, uh, proportional, I guess I should say, for the quarters. This is our punch out here that we used. You know, we punched out of the uh, coin for our skirt. Just way too small for a clapper. So I never throw anything away, and I recommend using a 3 8 punch for that. Now we need to put all these parts together, and I'm going to show you here that I use 20 gauge wire, because if you take a piece of wire and try to wrap it around the screw and put it through the hole here, it's just, the topper's not going to go on. It's just too thick. Every, this part here is just too thick. So I put two pieces of 20 gauge wire together and left two prongs out here. Now the two prongs are thin enough that when you put that when you put that screw in there, it's going to hold up very well and it will fit and the topper will go on. So there's a way we have to make this wire first because you you know if I just use one piece only wrapped around, it's too it's too flimsy. Okay, this is way too flimsy. Put the two pieces together, nice solid copper wire to use to add the jump ring and the clapper. So I'm going to go over now to my other bench and show you how I'll take these two pieces of wire which are six, in six inches in length, two of them, and I make this wire here. Okay we're back at our other bench now and I'm going to go ahead and got the two pieces of wire here six inches in length and you simply put them in your handheld drill here. Put them in there Tighten it up. I used to hold these by hand, the other end, but now I just use a pair of pliers. Hold the other end and just simply turn it on. See it spinning? Okay. Now keep going. Now, I've already spun some out, I wound it up, pull it out. And what you have here on both ends are two prongs. I can cut this down, but now you can get two pieces of wire to hold your clapper 
and attach to the screw that's gonna go into the coin belt. That's how we take two 20 gauge pieces of wire and make it a lot stronger and make it ready to put into our coin belt. Okay, I just want to give you a quick visual here of what's going to happen next. I've taken the wire and put the screw through it, at whatever the prongs are, kind of cut it off, folded it around. Now it's going to be inserted inside here, and we'll add the topper. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and be right back. Okay, now that we have the wire connected to the screw with the two prongs, got our topper put on. I position the wire in the center. It's time to cut off this excess here. And so just take your wire cutters, and I like to take the part that's furthest away, put the cutter part furthest away from the, the being flush from the bottom of the skirt, like that, and then just simply cut it off. That way you got about, oh, it looks like about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth and eighth of an inch um, below the skirt. That enables you next, I'll take needle nose pliers here, and you work with it a little bit, and you just bend it around so that you have this. You end up having this little hole here to add your jump ring and your clapper. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up and show you the, the final results. Okay, welcome back. We've now completed our coin belt. Give you a closer look here. We have our topper attached to the dome, attached to the skirt. And underneath here, we have our clapper showing a cabin of the Great Smoky Mountains. It's attached to a jump ring that's attached to the wire that we used, that we made, to attach to the screw that then the topper attaches to. And I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and keep this silver and not antique it. Uh, the more I look at it, the more I like the look of this. If I did antique it, it would look more like this one here. And I would use Black Max Antique, and that gives a nice, de you know, the details pop when you uh, use that Black Max like that. But uh, and here's it, here it is right here. Black Max from Rio Grande. I like to use that for all of the silver things I make, pendants, rings, whatever. LOS, liver or sulfur, I use for copper. And this is like, um, this is a dragon's eye bell that I made. It's got a different topper, but they also, that topper attaches just like the ones we did today. And talking about antiquing, I would recommend go ahead and go to my Celtic Cross videos, part four, where you'll see all the prep work that I do before antiquing. And I show it in great detail. Not only the prep work, but how I do antique using uh, Ren Wax, buffing uh, the LOS after I've added the Ren Wax to it, Renaissance Wax, all the different techniques I use to get uh, what I consider a great looking antique. Uh, well, on that video, it was a Celtic cross, but anything, whether it be a bell, a ring, whatsoever. So just go to that video, part four, Celtic Cross, and see all the things on what you need to do to have a good antiquing uh, process. Now, I really hope you enjoyed our little journey here on making a coin bell. And if you did, I would appreciate you liking our video and also uh, subscribe to my channel if you feel like it. Uh, so until next time, this is Jimmy Pascal with JP's Coin Craft saying so long and keep on ringing.